Hello everyone, and today we are port begging once again. Yes, we're here begging for Rogue Leader and Rebel Strike. So if you don't know what Rogue Leader and Rebel Strike are, they are the sequels to Rogue Squadron, okay? Rogue Leader released in 2002, 2001 if you were in the US, it was a GameCube launch title. Uh, Rebel Strike, which was Rogue Squadron 3, released in 2003. Both of them were exclusively released for the GameCube. They, are de they were developed by the now defunct Factor 5 and published by LucasArts. So you played as Luke Skywalker and Wedge Antilles, who were the commanders of Rogue Squadron. Now, both games took you through the events from episode 4, 5, and 6, some events in between as well. Uh, Rogue Leader's opening mission was an assault on the Death Star from Episode 4, and it is the best examples of that, one of the best examples of that mission in a video game. Okay, there's been quite a lot of games. We've Star Wars Trilogy Arcade, we've seen uh, Super Star Wars had one with Mode 7 as well, but I thought the one in uh, Rogue Leader was the best example of it. Visually, game was amazing, had amazing sound design as well, uh, it used Dolby Digital, which was awesome. Holds up well today, you know, holds up so well today. Uh, you can run it in the Dolphin emulator at 4K, however there are issues with the sound. Now, this was always one of those games that was always a problem game for Dolphin to run. Okay, uh, Dolphin 5.0 uh, has got it running, you can actually get it running, but there are quite a few sound issues. The use of Dolby Digital um, is one of the reasons why it has so many issues running on modern PCs. But imagine it running on a modern PC, running it native 4K. I, I mean, it shouldn't be too taxing as well. It is a GameCube game. It does, again, run on Dolphin at 4K. Um, the original ran on six at 60 FPS on the GameCube. Again, Factor 5 did it right. Good stuff. Uh, so getting it to run on a PC wouldn't be, wouldn't be a huge issue. I mean, getting it at 4K, 60 FPS, because it still looks good. It wouldn't need a huge amount of tarting up, really. Um... Maybe just fix some of the cutscene resolutions, maybe just upscale them, but it wouldn't be a hugely expensive thing to port. And, you know, while we're at it, I mean, obviously EA don't own the rights to the old Star Wars games. It's uh, LucasArts, still the publisher, but it's actually Disney uh, that uses LucasArts. LucasArts don't make any or publish any games or make any games anymore, but they still publish old Star Wars games. Uh, we've seen a lot of them on Steam, like the Jedi Knight games, etc. And, um, you know, things like uh, X-Wing and the TIE Fighter games. We've seen them come to Steam. So it'd be nice to see something that was console exclusive at least come to Steam uh, or G and GOG, obviously, as well. Uh, but yeah, I think it would be good. So why do we want it on PC then? Well, it would be a nice addition to the Star Wars library on PC. And it's a good place to have a sort of definitive library. Should they port it to Xbox One and PS4? Yeah. Port it to Switch as well. Port it to everything. I'd love a Rogue Squadron trilogy on PC. Um, it would be nice, again, if it sells well, you could maybe even persuade EA to make another Rogue Squadron game. I mean, think about it, Rogue Squadron could be the killer app that VR needs. Imagine it as a VR game. Be amazing as well. I mean, it is a bit more arcadey than uh, X, the X-Wing TIE Fighter series. The X-Wing TIE Fighter series, they were more simulation based. This is a bit more arcadey and it's a bit easier to get it to appeal to a mass audience. You know, with the success of things like Rogue One, you know, you've got Rogue Squadron, very, sounds very similar, but they're two different things. Uh, but, you know, with things like that, you know, you've got some brand recognition there with the name Rogue and Star Wars. So, you know, it would be nice if they could take advantage of it. it. would be interesting. And again, it would allow a new generation of players who missed out on the GameCube originals to experience the complete Rogue Squadron trilogy. Because, of course you can get Rogue Squadron 1 on PC. Rogue Squadron 1 did come out on PC. It was a Nintendo 64 and uh, PC exclusive. I mean, it's sad that Factor 5 are no longer around, so if they did do a modern version of Rogue Squadron, it would have to be uh, 
have to be someone else that did it. But I think, you know, it could be the thing that VR, because I always think of that in VR would be incredible. I know Battlefront did a a VR mission type thing in space, but imagine a whole game around that. Imagine that. That could be the thing that, that you know, gets VR into the kind of mainstream. Because VR, it's been moderately successful, but for a lot of people, it's still too expensive, and it just lacks games VR. I mean, there's no game that you feel that you must own, and I think the a Rogue Squadron game could be, could be a Star Wars game. I mean, think about it. For a second, you get the first-person view and the cockpit of the thing, and if the gameplay is good, then, you know, Rogue Squadron would be, I think, a better fit than, I think, X-Wing or TIE Fighter, because, again, it is that easy appeal of Rogue Squadron. It's fairly easy to play, it's uh, it's not a, I mean, it's not an easy casual game by any means, but they are fairly easy. One thing I didn't like about Rebel Strike was the on foot missions. That was the only thing they added on foot missions. There was a few missions in it where you could pilot a walker as well, which added some variety. But it wasn't as good as being in the uh, the ship. You could get the X wing. You could get, there was all this, like, the Y-Wing and things like that, the A-Wing. There was all sorts of ships that you could unlock. You could even unlock the Millennium Falcon as well. You could even get some extra missions as well where you played in the Millennium Falcon. They were pretty cool, actually. In uh, I think it was Rogue Leader that had them. Uh, I remember buying uh, Rebel Strike, and it came, the European version at least, came with Rogue Leader for free. That was pretty cool, I thought. That was quite a nice little addition. It came on the actual disc. Uh, but I remember Rebel Strike, uh, they didn't make anything after that. They went and uh, partnered with Sony Factor 5 and made Lair, which was just awful. Okay, it used these, oh, god-awful six-axis controls. And it was sad to see the end of Factor 5 because they made some excellent Star Wars games. They had the best LucasArts logos Factor 5. I don't know if it was them that got to design it, but theirs was always the best out of all the LucasArts logos. That's one for a top 5, but anyway, that is all for Port Beggar. Bringing it to PC shouldn't cost the Earth to port. I mean, it wouldn't cost a huge amount. Um, I think it would be worth it in the end. I would bundle them both together, really, because I don't think you're going to get to sell them separately, unfortunately. I just don't think there's enough there. Uh, bundling them both together, sell them, you know, for sort of, you know, what, $15 or something like that, sort of £10, would be a good buy, and it would be a nice addition for any Star Wars fan. Incidentally, if you are a GameCube game collector, these two are a must-pick-up. They're quite expensive these days because they're only, again, exclusively on GameCube, but it would be nice to open those games up to a wider audience. So if you're collecting uh, GameCube games... They are a must-buy because they were two of the best GameCube exclusive games out there. Uh, certainly the best, one of the, some of the best Star Wars games. And that was a generation that had, you know, some amazing Star Wars games. The 6th gen had games like, you know, Jedi Knight 2, uh, Jedi Outcast, uh, Jedi, Ac Jedi Knight, Jedi Academy, KOTOR 1 and 2. And I thought Rogue Squadron was up there with the best of them really uh the two sequels to rogue squadron anyway but anyway that is all for this video so thank you for joining me i will see you again soon and goodbye